Sure. Well, when thinking about this question, I, I have to um, come up with the Apple Book, which is the popular name for the book Teaching English as a Second or Foreign Language. And one of the reasons that it's my favorite is that um, the book came out of the graduate program at UCLA that I attended, and, um, and the editor, Marianne Sels Mercia, was my mentor. Um, and substantively, the book has uh, such incredible coverage that I've been able to use it in many different courses, in ESL and EFL contexts with um, teachers of young learners and teachers of ESP. So it's just very comprehensive and um, has stood the test of time. Okay. I, I'm going to answer the what. Um, and I think the um, orientation in the last 25 years toward paying far greater attention to student needs is probably, in my opinion, the most important influence or kind of perspective on language teaching. So that can, um, when we think about student needs, an obvious would be ESP courses where we, we tailor curriculum materials, um, pedagogy to the needs of students, I say nurses, Pakistani nurses in British hospitals, or um, I live in California, we might be working with um, uh, preparing people to work in, um, in the on-the-job training to work as medical assistants, say. Uh, so we think about what their needs are and then what kind of course can we tailor to those needs. It also includes students um, preparing for English for academic purposes, so helping them with academic lectures, academic reading, knowing how to write research papers, so that would be another orientation. Um, and if we think about more survival orientation, what do our students need in terms of um, being able to go to the bank and cash a check, uh, being able to do their tax forms, to write a resume. So I think uh, paying attention to their needs and then not thinking of them as a captive audience but as an audience that we ought to um, tailor courses to depending upon where they're coming from has led to much better teaching, uh, much better materials development, and I think uh, a general, a greater satisfaction that we're meeting the needs of our students. I actually have thought of several different ways to answer it, but I'm going to give a kind of anecdote, and then um, uh, that should serve to uh, tell you what I was thinking. When I was, my first year of teaching, I used a book I'll never forget the title. It was called 504 Absolutely Essential Words in English. Okay. And unit two or three was the word morsel. And I remember thinking as I was preparing my lesson, morsel? Why do my students need morsel? Is that a 504 <laughs> essential word? And so I would teach it dutifully, and then I would usually, you know, say, well, this is really not that important of a word. We talk about, you know, a mouse eating a morsel of cheese, or if you look on a bag of chocolate chip cookies, we call them chips, but the bag actually says chocolate chip morsels. And that was the only two contexts I could think that they would ever want to use that word. So, to, to bring it to current thinking, I think corpus linguistics now gives us principled reasons for teaching, among other things, vocabulary. And so if I could go back 25 years to when I started teaching, I would toss out this book, 504 Absolutely Essential Words, and say someone with some kind of intuition or some weird word list came up with those 504 words. And, you know, and they weren't justified. Because I could give you other examples in that list too. But now we can justify it. We can say we can look at a British corpus, we can look at an American English corpus, we can look at an oral corpus, we can look at written corpora, we can look at reading, and we can now make good choices about, say, vocabulary um, uh, teaching based on those principled quantitative rationale for. For, for teaching now, and I, I think that's one of the major influences that, had I known 
<laughs> where to seek that kind of information. But of course, it didn't exist because at the time we were hand counting uh, vocabulary items. And now we have we can harness the power the power of the computer to, to do that for us. So now I think our job is to really take advantage of that power and and turn it into productive uh, teaching and materials development.